Hello, everyone, and we are so happy to have you with us here tonight. This is Jerry Lee, and I'm standing in for the Manifester, and I want to thank my wife, Janet Lee, for her wonderful organ playing. It is so great to start off the uh, teaching uh, with music, as you'll see in our teaching here tonight, how important all the senses uh, have to do uh, with uh, with factoring within uh, our uh, environment of the mind and environment of the spirit and environment of the world. So tonight, latolution versus evolution. I cannot accentuate the importance of these teachings. Highly improbable that I will finish uh, the subject today by any means. Uh, there will be at least one more uh, teaching, I believe, on this. And that does not mean that the subject would be finished, uh, but it would be uh, sufficiently covered to where a lot of people would get <clears throat> some uh, super insight on the subject. And we're going to use some incredible scriptures today. You will not want to miss these scriptures. So if you need a drink of water, you need to go to the bathroom, do it right now. Get that out of the way. Because once we get started uh, on those scriptures, you know, I don't often uh, repeat them. And they are mind-boggling, uh, eye-opening, ear-filling scriptures that you will not want to miss as I go into a revelation of their meaning. Okay, so uh, here we go. Uh, we're going to uh, start uh, <clears throat> reading something in... Um, in Genesis, and uh, so I have several things to, to read there, uh, but I, I just found it interesting to start off reading in the second chapter of uh, Genesis, and we'll begin with um, verse 8, and, and the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. Now understand that Eden existed before there was the garden of Eden. And there was Eden, and there was an east part, and there was a west part. And God planted a garden in eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed, and out of the ground. And we're in chapter 2, verse 9 of Genesis. Out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant in the sight and good for, for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. The tree of life was created out of the ground. So this is very important to understand the Bible teaching this, how that God can bring something out of the ground. Uh, uh, and we're going we're gonna to go into a scripture here that really uh, revelates that out of the ground business in a little bit. But hang and hold because... This is an exciting journey today. And we're excited right now to talk about this truth. Okay, so uh, everything that was good, everything good for food was to grow out of the ground. And that included the tree of life. And, um, uh, the, uh, and uh, it says, in the midst of the garden, uh, uh, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That grew out of the ground, too. Okay, now we'll skip there for a little bit. We'll go beyond these uh, four different rivers, which are the four different kinds of humankind, to the third chapter, first verse. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast. Than any beast. Now, um, than any beast of the field which God had made, and he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now, we need to, you know, the translators were really gentle on this. But, you know, in the book of Ecclesiastes, it's very, very clear. It says, you know, that uh, one of the manifested truths is that, that humans are also beasts. So, you know, there's many different levels of a beast, but they're all beasts. And, and this uh, serpent wasn't a snake. Uh, this serpent was a human, uh, was from the Gihon River people. Uh, it, this uh, serpent, Gihon, 
uh, was a very intelligent creature, but did not have a soul. The soulless. These were pre-Adamic uh, soulless uh, creatures, but they were intelligent. And we talked about last um, week how that there could be in the uh, discovery of the universe other um, human types of beings, uh, you know, on planets uh, by far-fetched stars uh, that had uh, human-like uh, creations, and they could be really intelligent, but that would not guarantee that they had a soul. And and there's two kinds of soul. We're talking soul, uh, S-O-U-L, capital S, uh, not small s. Small s just is talking about, uh, you know, the human body type of soul. But we're talking the spirit soul. Okay, now, uh, what this reads, really, is what it's saying is these Gaihan people were smarter than any of the other uh, creatures that were created. That included Adam and Eve. They were smarter than they were when it came to things about worldly knowledge. And uh, and, and it, it's right here in the Bible, and if you, you, you want to read and know the truth, you can know it. If you don't want to know the truth, I don't even know why you're listening to me today, uh, because that's that's what I'm into is the truth and what the Bible really is teaching, really is saying. And it's unfolding this truth that is so important for this time of your life and this time of this age. OK, now, uh, so he's talking to the woman and uh, and he says, uh, you know, you can eat all the trees uh, and all the fruit of the trees, um, you know, and. And the woman says, well, no, we're not supposed to. Uh, we're, you know, not supposed to eat of the tree uh, of, you know, of, of, of knowledge. Uh, because God said if we if we even touch it, and if we eat of it or even touch it, that, that we would die. And the serpent, the Gaihan person said, you shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day that you eat thereof, your eyes will be open." And you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And the woman, she thought about what the Gaihan fella said, and she said, oh, the tree really does look good. It looks like the food is good. She said, that's what my sense says. And um, it was pleasant to her to her eyes. This was one of the senses that, that she made the decision on her eyes. And it was a tree that was desired to make one wise. So she took the fruit of it, and she ate. She gave some to her husband. He did eat. There's a lot of story there. We don't have time to go into it. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew not that they were naked. And now, is this religious stupidity, or what is it? I mean, you're you're uh, so innocent that you don't even know when you're naked? Uh, you know, I think there's a whole lot of misunderstanding and misconstrued concepts that people teach out there uh, in their delivery of scriptures and, and understanding of scriptures, uh, because basically they don't even know what they're talking about. Uh, you know, if you turn uh, to uh, to verse um, 22 uh, of chapter 3, verse 22 of chapter 3, and we're in chapter 3, here's what it says, and this is the Lord saying it. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now at least he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. We better get him out of that garden. <laughs> now, let's really think about this just a little bit. It seems like that until the man's eyes were opened and he was able to, and the woman and man, the eyes were open and uh, they were able to have this worldly knowledge, this worldly knowledge that came out of the ground, uh, that they didn't know that they were naked. And there's a lot to that, and I don't have time to preach that one today. Uh, but also, it really came to them that, wow, they better get in there and eat this tree of life. They better eat from that, because if they eat of that, they could live forever. And apparently, for some religious re reason or revelation reason, they had not partaken of it yet. And so they did not have that thing of being able to live together. But as soon as they had their eyes open, they were ready to do that. Now, you really have to think about this serpent man, what he said, this, this Gaihan man. He says, you will not die. And, and that's a fact that, that, that 
Adam didn't die right then. Uh, he died during his generation time. Eve died during her generation time. It was a little bit different uh, than what could have been interpreted to be. Uh, but here's the thing. And God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us. It's apparent that it couldn't be said at the time that he was like one of us until he ate of that tree of good and evil. After he ate of the tree of good and evil, then it says, well, you know, now he's like us. He's going to know about this tree of life and understand the fullest power of it. We better get him away from it. Get him out of here. Is that sort of stirring you up a little bit? Is that sort of getting you itchy? Is that sort of getting you to think what in the world? Never heard it said like this before. It stirs you up a little bit because hey, it's what it says. It's what the Bible says. Well, the thing that was, you know, God wanted his people to come into knowledge. And they, they're eventually going, they were eventually needing to come into both the knowledge of good and evil. But God had a plan and God wanted, God wanted that knowledge to be taught by the good angels, not the Gihon people. And God wanted them to be obedient, and God wanted them to seek first the kingdom of God, and then all his righteousness would be added. Now, we're not saying that Adam did not have an, a certain knowledge of that, but there is a certain thing uh, that's even true in quantum uh, atomic uh, understanding called entanglement. And that's when two atoms are so alike that they that they occupy uh, the same space of mental connection so that whatever happens to one happens to the other and there are a scripture in the new testament that says and paul wrote this he said there was people in the past that were incredible people they had faith they did miracles they even raised the dead they did incredible things but they were not able to go on into the deeper revelations uh, because God was holding them back until we could get into it. And, and because God has a plan uh, to bring his people in uh, together. And, you know, they, one belongs to the other. The other belongs to the one. It was sort of a kind of, of spiritual entanglement. Uh, atomic entanglement in the physical, spiritual entanglement in the, in the spirit realm. And so that was just exciting. So that's what really happened there is out of time, taught by the wrong people. You know that you can have something that has a, that has a lot of spectacular knowledge. You can have something that has a lot of entertainment. You can have something told you that has a lot of appeal. But if it's not told you to you by the spirit person that God is leading you to, who you are supposed to be aligned with and who you are aligned with, then you'll be receiving something from people that are more belo belonging to the lattice of the Gihon people. And, and their purpose for delivering the message that they're giving, giving, even though there's, there's uh, some truth in it, maybe a lot of truth in it, is different than the purpose for the person who is anointed by God to give it. And so the way that you are going to receive it is going to be of a much more purified nature and in the right time. Doesn't mean you're not going to get there. It doesn't mean that because you are not uh, uh, knowledgeable uh, that you're never going to be able to get, get that knowledge. It just mean God, means God has a time for it. And you know, some of you out there right now, this is your time. This is your time. It is your time. Okay, we're going to start, so we mentioned the scripture last time. We're going to start uh, in Job, and we're going to look at Job 26, chapter 26. Job chapter 26, verse 5. I read this to you last time. I read it again. I want to put some meaning to it now. Dead things are formed from under the waters. Now, that's quite the scripture. Something that is dead is formed from underneath the waters. It, it doesn't mean that what causes people to become de formed and dead, what causes people to be, take the form of de death is uh, something that happens to them under the waters, you know. But what it is saying is that the energy of atoms that had lived in creations that existed before are formed into new living things. And that's what it's talking about. 
The water is here representing energies. These dead things representing atoms, the energy of atoms. And, and you know, it's a known thing in science, and it's a known thing to a lot of people that that even that even the atoms that were once in in uh, in dinosaurs uh, could now be living in people. That uh, that atoms that were among the stars could now be in the body of people. Uh, we're like we're like made out of stardust, and and uh, it just goes on and on and on because energy uh, is um, uh, you know it's infinite. It's it it is continuously uh, uh, recreated. Uh, it 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 never uh, ever will come to a total absolute end. It will come to uh, what the Bible says. It will roll together as a scroll. It will come into a high density, and and as far as all the forms and the figurations of the universe being like stars and planets and and various kinds of of uh, energy forms that are in a universe, it will not have that. It'll be just into a a solid uh, you know a density. But then God will stretch it out and create a new universe, and it will go on. But God has been involved in this planting uh, of of things that uh, you know are, in, are that are in substance, planted in the ground, even the tree of life, and, and just like us, here we are, a human being, full of all these atoms that could have anything from dinosaur energy in us uh, uh, to who knows. The, the the dead matter that they were made out of and and moved on and we be, it became part of our body who knows and who cares really but the thing of it is is we have in this this ground this 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 dirt of the earth uh, those those elements uh, of those de- of that dead matter which is in a continuum of creation and this is a kind of lanolution it's God uh, in his continuum. Uh, never ending of worlds, never ending of creations, being involved in everything that could ever happen, whose potentiation is his beyond anyone else that could even imagine to have that position. And so it's absolutely nothing less than beautiful, nothing less less than magnificent, and I'm into it. And I'm, I'm on that glory train. i got a ride. I'm not getting off. And I want you to stick with me tonight because I have some interesting scriptures to show you. And I don't want to say they're going to blow you away. I would rather uh, say they are going to cause you to ascend in your mind and become transformed into your thinking. Because that is exactly and, and and so is is it talking about inhabitants this scripture sure and the inhabitants thereof so this dead matter has to do with inhabitants and and but these atoms are creating and continuing to create and inhabitants of all kinds are being made from from these and it is important that this scripture is there because this scripture is telling us something about about atoms well, what about this thing about latolution? Where in the world is that coming from? Well, lattice you could, is one of the technical terms uh, for crystals. Crystals have a lattice design, and, and crystals are a very interesting subject. Someday, Lord willing, I will minister uh, and do a lecture just on crystals and all the meaning of crystals as they would relate uh, revelatory-wise uh, from the scriptures uh, to just about everything that there can imagine to be. In fact, the first time that I got the revelation about Lanolution and about that was one time I was ministering up on the platform in the state of Indiana, and God spoke to me and says, everything has a lattice. And I thought, everything has a lattice. What kind of language is that? What in the world does that mean? And it was just puzzling to me. It was a paradox. But you know, I didn't just throw it away. I didn't put it into a sewer disposal program. I said, I know the Spirit of God said this. I don't understand it. It doesn't relate to me, but I'm not letting go of it. I'm holding on to it, and I want to admonish you, and I want to 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 testify to you, to strengthen you, and to encourage you that even though there are some of these teachings that you don't grab onto immediately and you don't totally understand, that does not mean that you will not eventually understand. And sometime tonight, we're going to do 
uh, a latitation. And that latitation will be for the purpose of evoking in your mind, uh, you know, latent and, and, uh, uh, and knowledge that has uh, just not evolved. It's just not uh, emerged from, from your, your mind. And we're going to be into that sometime tonight. God help me not to forget. Uh, in the meanwhile, we are moving on. And uh, we're going to get into one of the most sensational revelations of Lan Uh We should just talk a little bit, a little bit about, you know, uh, you know what is Lan Uh What is the lattice? Um, I, I want to... You know, share that with you by scripture because it is um, so absolutely uh, incredible. So let me let me let's just go over just a little bit of the definitions of um, of lattice. Um, a structure of crossed laths or bars with spaces in between. A pattern of figuration, structure, form, or disposition that a materialization or entity has taken or expresses. And someone might say, what? <laughs> human beings or animals don't look like that with bars and, and cross pieces and, and laths and all of that. Well, yes, they do in, in their, um, their uh, mechanism that has to do with atoms and molecules and all of that. It's amazing what they do look like when you see them under a microscope and when you see them uh, through the scientific eye. The lattice represents uh, the extent of a person's image and design. Every person has a different lattice. Every person has a different fingerprint. That fingerprint is from a DNA that is unique. It's a unique unique uh, birth combination of two other persons that, that uh, donated 50% of their DNA, and those two DNAs came together and created a unique DNA. And and um, and just because those two persons would then decide to create another baby and give 50% of uh, a, a donorship of their DNA each and create another baby, that doesn't mean that the other baby would be just like the first one, because that is how versatile the DNA in each person is, and there is a network of genes, and it depends from which uh, part of the network of those genes uh, that the input uh, into the, the ovum and the, and the sperm come as to how the effect of, of, of the DNA of that new uh, entity will be. And so the versatility is just like limitless, and it's awesome. Okay, so everyone has a unique lattice. Uh, another word for lattice could be window or viewpoint. Each person has windows into their being, genetic windows, windows of potential, windows of change. Another word that associates with the meaning of lattice is nature. Uh, the nature consequences of a thing or the natural expectations of a thing. Uh, Latolution is the process of one's nature as it is affected or changed from point to point. Latolution. So lattice as in atomic lattice, uh, latolution or lutron uh, is from uh, the word Greek word uh, to be loosened, lutron to be loosened. And and so we've got uh, to loosen the lattice. And you'll see, hopefully, in this teaching tonight or in the one next week, uh, what it means to be uh, loosened in your lattice, to be set free in your lattice. Uh, the lattice, uh, which is this physical body, can be like a prison. Uh, some people are almost born with uh, such strong genetic uh, genomes and leadings of their DNA that they become almost prisoners of it. And they can't hardly overcome some of the habitual inbred, inborn things uh, that is distracting to spirituality and is just not the most happy, pleasurable way of life. Uh, and they don't know what to do with it because it's so much a part of them, like a breath or, or like a skin, you know. But um, it is it is possible to change your lattice. It is possible uh, to have a lattice change. Okay. Uh, atomic lattice, the sense of relative positions of universal component structures, 
and not the absolute position of his structures as related to point uh, symmetries, uh, but uh, uh, lattice projections, uh, projections such as would apply to electromagnetic radiation, uh, two-body systems, dualistic mathematics, uh, 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 phonon uh, quantitized lattice vibrations, uh, the holy manifest belief that air, even transforming fields do not divert the coherent state of the universe that keeps wave function, uh, functions from advancing energy to infinite energy states. Atomic lattising is not always detection apparent. Just as in superfluids when at low rotation speeds, there are no vortexes revealed. But as speeds of rotation increase, more and more vortexes appear. So, also, atomic prevailing states and conditions affect awareness of atomic lattices. Now, there's a whole lot more to be said about the word lattice, like lattice change, how that you can, in, in, lattice includes mental and spiritual overruling and defective characteristics and how that a person can, 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 living in the flesh can go from the one point of transformation to the spiritual essence. Uh, or you can change to the negative. And the crystal lattice uh, can be considered a, a geometric arrangement of the points in space in which occur uh, crystal ions, molecules, or atoms. And we're going to be talking a little bit uh, using this Bible scripture I've been telling you about, about, uh, you know, space that's in between the atoms and how the meaning of that can be uh, so terrific as to uh, uh, being applicable uh, to understanding that everyone, you know, does eventually need to have. So many uh, aspects of the crystal lattice portray patterns of the truth. And um, there's, uh, you, you know, uh, all kinds of other things that, that we could say. Uh, interesting song, in, interesting uh, verse in the Song of the Solomon. My beloved is like a roe, a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall. He looketh forth at, uh, at the windows, showing himself through the lattice. Um, you know, that is a, if, if this were really truly interpreted in its most beautiful sense and rational meaning, uh, you would be able to see how that, that uh, there is the symbolism of a human being uh, to certain kinds of animal, animals. Uh, there is uh, taken into the envir uh, environment of, of the human uh, things like walls, like windows. Uh, those walls, uh, you know, have meanings of partition and separation, uh, how that people separate their lattices from other lattices. Uh, the windows uh, keep them from feeling imprisoned, allow fresh air in, uh, but they are also uh, called a lattice uh, because the lattice is the very opening uh, to, to the potential of anything that uh, should be and could ever be, and, uh, and also things that should not be. Um, and so then there is finally the time uh, when whatever you are, whoever you are, like the song, Just As I Am, it's time to show yourself through the lattice and show where you're at, what you have reached. And then there's things like, uh, you know, in the, in the talk of latolution, there's lattice circuits, like the looping forward and backward progressions of creation's physical and spiritual development. And, um, you know, these, these are just all part of, of the things. Uh, Psalms uh, 19.6 puts it this way, His going forth is from one end of the heaven, and his circuits unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. And I beheld, as another one, uh, Revelations 8, 13, I beheld and, and heard an angel flying through the midst of the heavens, saying with a loud voice, Woe to inhabitants of the earth. So there's all kinds of meaning that is tied up and involved in the term, uh, you know, the term lattice. Uh, it, it is just uh, so broad, uh, so, so uh, powerful in its, uh, uh, you know, revelation of transformations and equilibriums uh, and its various vibration states. Um, I, I, I wish I had more time to get into the photo translations uh, through the Soundtron messaging on it uh, and cosmic acceleration as versus uh, spiritual acceleration. Uh, we will have our time for all of that, but for right now, we have to keep moving. 
we have to keep going. I did touch a little bit last week about one of the differences of evolution versus latolution is that uh, evolution really does not provide, has really no true provision uh, for the advance of consciousness. And uh, I know there are uh, soldiers of evolution working out there trying to uh, bring forth those points, trying to, um, you know, fill in the voids to make evolution more the the, the truth and can be challenged. Uh, but they will never reach that. Uh, they'll come up with all the kind of suppositions that they want. But, uh, you know, it, it will only be a tangential at the, at the maximum possibility. And it will never reach into the deep core of, of the inner truth that is the truth, so help us God. Uh, the truth that is so vivid, so real, uh, so full of the power of God that the Bible describes it personally for each person that it's like, uh, uh, you know, it's like a mighty wind causing uh, rivers to gush from out of our innermost being. Uh, it's, it's beautiful. Okay, so here we go. We go on with this uh, because mortals uh, do have co consciousness. And that is uh, the part that is the high spark of emerging awareness. And the word emerging is a far more uh, corresponding term uh, to the teaching of, um, of latolution. Uh, it doesn't really uh, smack that well with, with, uh, with evolution. Evolution is more into the word evolve. Now, it doesn't mean that every time the word evolve uh, would be chosen to be used, that that's a damned word because it belongs to, to evolution. It does not belong to evolution. It is contained within the word evolution, and, and, uh, and the word is frequently a part of the teachings of evolution. But the word evolve uh, is, is not a word that belongs to evolution. It can belong just as much to latolution. But more often, we like to use the word emerge because we are saying that God has spoken his, his word of creation into everything that exists, that there is nowhere in the entire universe, there is no atom, there is no molecule, uh, there is nothing that is even the tiniest speck, the smallest punt, uh, that does not have in it uh, the the soundtron message of the will of God, the wills of God, the perfect will, the permissive will, etc., etc., uh, that is in everything. So, so there is the possibility for, for the tree of life to come forth from the ground. There's the possibility for the tree of good and evil to come forth from the ground. God said, I created good, I created evil. It didn't mean that he personally went out and with a tool and an anvil, uh, you know, chiseled out evil, but he meant that he created the potential for all things because he created the potential for all things. That therefore means that everything that exists all the potentials that there is of everything that exists and that can come forth was created by God. So in that very, very broad sense, God created everything that could be the positive and the negative. And so uh, it, it matters not how vast and busy the universe is. The only thing uh, that is really important in the ultimate conclusion and summary and, and resolution of everything has to do with with the entities who have consciousness that have spirit value. And the rest of everything is a, is, is a probe, a passing tone without merit. Materialism, uh, you know, has its points to where it leads, but, you know, it ultimately ends up uh, as, a, as a ball or a scroll of high density, and the spirit goes on to be with God who gave it. All right. So... Latolution, then, is a term taken uh, in part, as I said, from the word lattice, as atomic lattice, and uh, it um, describes the images, the dispositions, the makeups of a person and of things and of energies. Hang and hold now. We're getting hot. We're getting ready. I feel the accelerations, and I feel the fire, uh, you know, the lower lights burning. Uh, you know, we're, we're just about ready to climb up Sunshine Mountain. So, so don't get, to, don't reach the peak of your listening capability at this point, because you will miss out on the grandest overture that is about to sound with the orchestra of angels in this revelation of God. So hang and hold. All right. Uh, so, um, you know, 
we 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 continue. We go on. Uh, we we just have to see, as we said, that the the God has set universal laws into the orders of all called latolution, and in that sense, God has something to do with everything that occurs in the universe. And God has granted free will agency to creation, all creation, especially intelligent creations, uh, who are most often affected. Uh, uh, in that sense, uh, by their own destiny and by their own actions that uh, that um, uh, affect that destiny. So in that sense, uh, uh, surely, as the MIV states it, they have written violence to themselves uh, or they have written blessings to themselves by choose you this day whom you will serve. You serve the God of blessings or the God of violence. Uh, that's how it goes. Last week, we introduced the word convolution in the book of Genesis, uh, where it talks about, you know, the morning and the night. And we showed that, that, one, that a real deep word for night is convolution, and it means a twisting away as the darkness of night turning, twisting, or convoluting away from the light of day, the shadow of turning, uh, and veritableness as it is described in uh, various uh, places in the Bible, especially the one I'm referring to, uh, James Chapter 1, verse 17. Okay, now, here we go. Let's get you to turn with me <clears throat> to the book of Genesis again, if you have left there. And we're going to be looking at um, Genesis chapter 28. And Isaac, the father of Jacob, has called Isaac together, blessed him, and charged him, and saying, I don't want you to take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Now, this this young man has grown up in Canaan, and he's no doubt come to uh, meet and have friendship with some of the young ladies there. And uh, there is um, historical things that seem to indicate that some of the Canaanites were really, some of those women were quite beautiful. And uh, he may have had some really thick plotted thoughts in his mind about a lady that he would like to take to be his wife. And she very possibly could have been a Canaanite. <clears throat> well, Daddy, Daddy who was wanting the will of God, wanting the will of God, he called Jacob said, Jacob, I want you to stop your thoughts. I want you to stop your emotions. I want you to stop your feelings about being here at this time because I want to send you away. Dad, I don't want to go away. I love it here. I don't want to leave you and mom and my family. What do you mean go away, Dad? For how long? A day or two? No, you're going to be gone longer than that. I want to send you to Padamaram. Padamaram? Why would I want to go there? Well, it's, it's the house of of your mother and father, of your mother's father. And I want you to take a wife from there. And Levin, he's your mother's brother. But God will bless you, and he will multiply you, and he'll give you blessings, the blessings of Abraham. And your seed will be blessed. But that's what you've got to do. So he sent Isaac away. So Isaac, pardon me, sent Jacob away to Padamaram. Okay, well, on the way, and this is really significant and important. Get ready. Get ready. Verse 12. Chapter 28, Genesis, verse 12. Jacob lies down. He's tired this evening. The best thing he could find for a pillow was a smooth stone. He lays his head on the smooth stone because gets himself as comfortable as he can with whatever kind of of skins of animals or or coats that he had and he goes to sleep and and how I like to say it the Senadaki and he dreamed and behold a ladder set up on the earth a person might say wow you mean ladders were invented way back then? <clears throat> they knew about ladders? Well, yes, but not the kind of ladder 
that you may be thinking, but yet there is in the design of those ladders a similarity to lattice. And we want to get into this thing about lattice because this is a revelation of revelations. He dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven, which means in the abstract that the bottom of it was on the earth. So the bottom was planted on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Now, sometimes people reply to this as a staircase. I have done it too, just for the ease of language. But the Bible says ladder. Now, when you think of a ladder and you think of angels ascending and descending, you would see a situation where you couldn't have someone coming down at the same time someone was going up. So it would be one-way traffic. Okay, is anybody up there coming down? Okay, all right, then I'm coming up. Do you hear me up there in heaven? Do you hear me? I'm coming up. All right, you better not be coming down. Yeah, but wonder if you don't make it all the way up and you get stuck and we're ready to come down. Yeah, well, I wonder if you come down and you get stuck before you get to the ground and I am can't get out of here either. It wasn't a good deal to just be a ladder going up to heaven. And, you know, a ladder, the whole idea of a ladder, first wind coming along, I mean, keeping it stable would not be simple. It was obviously something different. In fact, of course, it was different. It was a lattice. And the lattice, of course, each human body is a lattice. And the angels, the angels, the ophanim that are coming down to take bodies are you, are coming into our lattice. And the ones that are in our lattice that are overcoming the lattice are going back up the ladder to get back to the place where they can be returned to their original status as Ophanims. So the fallen o angels, the fallen Ophanim, are coming down, taking lattices, taking human bodies, and the ones that are overcoming the lattices are going back up the ladder, the ladder up through the lattice, though. They're using the lattice, just like the, the tree of life was planted in the soil of the earth. And the, and the tree grew up out of the soil of the earth. And it had fruit on it, 12 kinds of fruit, eat one kind for each month. That was for the, for the health and the, the life of the nations. All happened from the, from the ground. It's all part of the lattice revelation. Wow. So now we begin to see this thing of this lattice. And um, we we want to we want to talk a little bit about about the lattice. Um, you can um, you can get into your internet, and you can just put in there if you want. Put in there, uh, you know, lattice, or put in there atomic lattice. Uh, there are some extremely interesting teachings about the lattice, and uh, and they are very 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 important. Uh, now let's, let's just look at this thing on the lattice a little bit. Uh, there is what's called an optical uh, phenom um, and uh, these can be made out of atoms or ions which are also atoms but they're two different kinds of atoms and um, uh, it's very very interesting that uh, in this uh, optical phenom, this ladder lattice, there is a um, uh, a space between each pair of atoms and this a space between uh, these uh, uh, say two atoms uh, are involved uh, in the expanding of the energy between the two atoms and the uh, capability of the electrical forces uh, to extend to infinity the potential of that space so here we have this rigid crystal lattice, or we can call it, you know, the ladder, and and we see that it has harmonic uh, a chain of of atoms, and and crossbars of lattice vibrations and wavelengths uh, in still motion. 
So that's all the cross pieces, the vertical and the horizontal. And um, there is uh, potential within just this optical uh, phenom uh, for uh, arbitrary vibrations and arbitrary motion to create a superposition over normal modes. All right. Excuse me. That was a special kind of lattice right there <laughs> called a sneezer. <clears throat> now, I want you to hang and hold on this. This is important. An arbitrary vibrational motion can become a superposition over normal modes. Now, think in terms of this, this optical, because we think in terms of optical as the, the eye sense, the seeing, and that within the concept of this, there are potentials for arbitrary changes, arbitrary motions, to the point, to the fact, to the extent that within this lattice vibratory capability and wavelength of still motion, uh, that um, although in a sense that this lattice is similar to a crystal lattice and it is rigid, well, it is a crystal lattice and it's rigid, and even though it has a harmonic chain of atoms, uh, it is a sense in this still form. And, and, uh, but there is technically a space in between these atoms. Hard to visualize, hard to think about, hard to imagine or realize. But this is, you know, scientific fact. And, and, and it has uh, a great deal of uh, truth to it. But the interesting point is that within this, which seems to be something that you could not change because it's what you were born with. It was the nature you were given. Yet there is because the extent that is available by the electrical forces that extend the space between the two atoms goes to infinity. There is no limit to it. There is no bounding to it. So within that understanding, if you are able to get into this arbitrary, this change, this lattice change, you can become in a position of mental and spiritual and physical superposition, which is a superposition over the normal mode that was your birth nature, your lattice nature. And this is how you start moving up the, 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 the ladder lattice. Wow. Now, interesting. When we talk about these uh, optical uh, phenoms, uh, which are in the atomic world, are called bosoms, and that's interesting when we think of Abraham's bosom, um, they possess zero spin. Now, that may not ring a bell with you, but last um, in the last teaching uh, that I did, uh, I I was trying to show you something very interesting, but I didn't expect that you would grasp it at the moment. But I started off by telling you about this spin and statistics in arbitrary dimensions. And I revealed to you <clears throat> how that, um, that uh, as a person would investigate the three spatial dimensions that we basically are understood to live in, that the question is uh, closely related to Clifford algebras and would thus depend on the number of space dimensions uh, in order to make that a, a mathematical accrual. And without that particular mathematical accrual, you could not then have the number of space dimensions, even these spatial dimensions that are three. And I said how that you really from off of that is where string revelation came, which they now call the theory of everything. And, uh, and they have used that, uh, and it has this beautiful side of the math, but it, it really is something that they, de that they derived, uh, from a mathematical, uh, sequential, uh, arbitrational, uh, statistic and was not necessarily from a revelation that they found within nature itself. And that is the difference between evolution and latolution. Because what I'm wanting to show you 
is something that that is real uh, and how that yes uh, I was interested when it said spin and statistics because these atoms all have different kinds of spins and they spin different uh, speeds and different directions and some atoms only have half spins uh, but this particular uh, ladder, ladder that I'm talking about reaches a point of zero spin or if you want to say zero uh, spin or just say zero and if you go back to my teachings on zero how that we have to reach that point of zero in order to get uh, into our total overcoming uh, life uh, you know we have to reach that and this eyesight this optical phenom which is I understand and I know is uh, very uh, you know uh, connected uh, to to the atoms and their equilibriums and their positions that have to do uh, w with the making of, of microscopes and and all that type of thing but but there is still a lint a very deep and and uh, beautiful truth that can be arrived from it and that's what I want to get into uh, as we keep uh, you know getting deeper into this this revelation okay now we're just scratching the surface we've only begun to touch touch the ladder thing and he dreamed and behold a ladder was set up on earth and the top of it reached to heaven and behold the angels of God ascending and descending and behold the Lord stood above it and said I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father the God of Isaac the land wherein uh, whereupon thou uh, liest uh, to thee will I give it and to thy seed, and thy seed shall uh, be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west. Uh, once again, we come back to this thing of the dust of the earth, you know, the, 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 the physical lattice, the physical nature, uh, the seed, the people, uh, the whole revelation of uh, what the physical and the physiological uh, has to do in this uh, preparing uh, a person uh, by their spirit to have as a house to live in and how that this house is absolutely essential uh, as an as an operator as a piece of of equipment to be able to overcome uh, the past overcome memories of the past fulfill the scripture that says forgetting those things which are behind I press toward the mark of the high calling and and to getting into those things because it is connected to the whole revelation of the seed which is the word of God, which also incorporates flesh because the Bible says in the book of John, the first chapter, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, you know, and then it goes on to say, and the word was made flesh. So here we have the seed as being flesh, the seed as being the word, which which is an energizing uh, type of of, uh, of energy and, and a uh, electromagnetic force, uh, you know, or preferred in the manifest language, an amtristic force. And so these things are just totally exciting. And, and, uh, and the Lord is there above this lattice, up this place called heaven. The Lord is there. He's waiting for us to come through this lattice that touches down to earth. When we get up this ladder, this ladder, this ladder now, we'll, under, we'll get into a deeper under, uh, understanding of that, how that the, the ladder is just one scene of a lattice so all these ladders keep going together and you keep getting all your your lattices together and you end up with a full lattice uh, sort of like a network but the lattice is just this one scene and and uh, so it uh, it from that standpoint uh, you know is uh, very very uh, beautiful and very very interesting uh, to understand okay now let's go on in this verse here a little bit before we go to the next thing and, uh, and and don't jump the ship yet. I haven't given the full revelation of this. Just hang in there and, uh, and let your ears hear what thus saith the Spirit uh, to the church. Um, and so he says in the 15th verse of the 28th chapter, uh, Behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places where you go. And that has to include places of the mind. And that has to include the up, upper places and the lower places. Uh, when we a person's uh, working uh, to uh, fight depression, or when a person is is uh, in those higher places of joy and elation, uh, but all those things are potential and they're possible 
uh, for humans to have to go through. But God says, I'll be with you. Verse 16, Jacob awakened out of his sleep and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. I knew it not. That is something that is so important for this teaching, that the kingdom of God is within you. God is in this place called the lattice, and most people do not know it. Most people are like, you know, they, they, are, they are like, you know, they're naked and they don't know it. They're naked and they don't know it. And we're not talking about just the exposure of your flesh. We're talking about <clears throat> the nakedness that has to do with the loss of the um, the angelic agency. And Jacob was afraid. You can receive spiritual things and, and it can be so deep and so profound and, and so questioning of where is this leading that, that it can almost be, you know, scary. But it doesn't mean that it's not of God. It doesn't mean that God isn't standing up there at the top, up in heaven, directing the, 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 the angels to ascend and descend up this human lattice. And he was afraid and said, how dreadful in this, is this place? Now, words like dreadful and, ter and, and terrible, back in the old, old language, uh, translate in the new language, actually means how wonderful. How wonderful is this place? This is none other but the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. And so he understood this like it's being one of the uh, 12 gates of Jerusalem, so to speak, as a gate. To, to get into uh, the holy overcoming place of God, you know? And he understood that. And he called the name of the place Bethel, which means house of God. Wow. And then he ends up setting up a stone. And this could be like the beginning of the, the, uh, the ed, as we call it, stone. Okay. So um, now, now let's see where this goes to. Hang and hold, because here's the, this is the incredible next part. That's the part of that lattice, that ladder. You turn with me to uh, the 30th chapter of Genesis, beginning with the 37th verse. Genesis 37, or pardon me, Genesis 30, verse 37. And Jacob took him rods of green poplar and hazel and chestnut tree and peeled white streaks in them and made the white appear, which was in the rods, or made the, he made rods out of these branches of these uh, three kinds of, of trees, and these were green trees. They were you know young trees, um, and they were they were not had not been dried. They were still alive, and, uh, and that was very very important for this lattice revelation that we're going to see, and uh, uh, it was poplar and hazel and chestnut. And he set the rods, he made rods at them, and he, and he, he peeled streaks at them. Why did he do that? Well, let's keep reading. And he, uh, uh, which he, he had peeled uh, before the flocks in the gutters. He set the rods which he had peeled before the flocks in the gutters in the watering troughs. When the flocks came to drink, that they should conceive when they came to drink, and the flocks conceived before the rods and brought forth cattle, ring-staked, speckled, and spotted. Now, this is such an incredible, great revelation that it's the closest thing to astounding of the manifest revelations that are taught. Because it's tied into this latolution, which is tied into the soundtron and the soundtron wave. But here is something in the scripture, you know, just suddenly, just out of nowhere, where did Jacob get this knowledge to take these particular kind of trees, to take branches and make rods out of them, and to peel them down and peel these strips in them, to peel these strips? Where, where did he get the knowledge to peel these strips? And what was the signal of those strips? And what were they doing? What was that about? And... What, where did he get the idea that he could use these and put them in the watering troughs and that when the animals came to drink, they would see, optical, see 
the 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 rods and the peel the peel places in the rods, they would see that, and they would be affected, so that they would be they they would get pregnant. They would they would get pregnant, and they would even end up having their their children because or, or their offspring because of those peeled rods. And here's the incredible thing. This is this is this has to do with genetics. The deal that Jacob made with Laban was that he would keep all of the speckled and the and the ring straight type of, of animals, whether it be goats or sheep or cattle, he would keep he would keep them, especially we're talking say sheep and, and, and goats. And that all of the white ones would go to Laban. He would get the white ones. He'd get the ones. And Laban thought, oh, Laban thought, oh, yeah, I like that. I like these really pretty, pure-looking ones. Yeah, you can have the spotted and the ring straked and all that. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, there was more of the, at the time, of, of the pure kind than there was of these that had the spots. But Jacob said, I'll take these with the spots. Those will be mine. And Laban said, okay, that's what you want. You got a deal. And then he does this thing with the rods. Where did he get that information? I will tell you that he got that information on that day he met in Bethel with God when he slept and he received the revelation from God who was standing above the, the, the ladder lattice. That this thing about the lattice was part of this revelation. There was all kinds of other things that were received on, at that time. And that was part of it. Now, let's, let's just, let's get, let's get onto this ship because I'm going to show you some things that you will just absolutely, absolutely be amazed with. Amazed with. Absolutely. Okay. Let's set aside the optical for a minute and let's get into something else that happened. You can actually research as I did and you will discover that the poplar trees, hazel trees and chestnut trees all have the capability to put out pheromones. Now, pheromones is the type of thing like animals and humans have, and it's the type of thing that um, it has a sexual capability of drawing, uh, you know, a person to a person or an animal to an animal, and and uh, uh, it it has various kind of results. Now, animals, of course, they have a lot of their brain in their nostrils so to speak. I mean, just like eyes have a retina, which is part of the brain, uh, the nostrils of animals are connected, in a sense, to a neuron uh, place that is connected to a, a place of, of you know, a brain connection, so that uh, uh, there's a lot of intelligence that they can know by smelling. And so when they come to the watering troughs, what happens? Well, he doesn't just put that out any day and every day. He waits and puts that out. And according to the translations of the scripture, and I went and I looked at almost every, every Bible that was translated. And a lot of the translations, when they took verse 41, where it says, and he came to pass that when, that when so ever, when so ever, the stronger cattle did conceive before the, uh, the eyes of the cattle in the gutters, they might conceive among the rods. Uh, so you have you can easily see and understand that conceive has two different meanings there because they can't conceive once and then do it right again within the second uh, uh, part of the same uh, motions in the same place. So what it's talking about, when they came into heat, when they came into heat and they were ready to mate, uh, jo Joseph then brought them to this watering place where he put in these rods that were peeled, and there's strips running down them. There was, there was a design there. There was a meaning there. There was something that was happening there that Joseph knew by lat illusion. He knew by the last revelation what he was doing. And here's what happened. When you put that, that uh, uh, rod, which comes from those three kinds of trees, that he obviously had each one of those, uh, and well, several of each one being represented, Rods of the green poplar, rods of the hazel, rods of the chestnut tree. They emitted pheromones. 
especially because it was out in the open and the sun shining on it causes the heat to rise. They say if you're a human being and that you have a lot of clothing on, that where the pheromones come from the human body is underarm hair, uh, privacy hair, uh, various kinds of you know chest hair uh, from a man, and that if he's got heavy clothes on and he gets hot, then his uh, the vapor and the smell of the pheromones will come up through his collar, and, you know, and come out, and uh, because of the heat, so the heat of the sun can r- cause those pheromones to rise, and the animals, the goats, the sheep, they could smell it, and and they came right there then where the watering was and where the pheromones were and that's where they went ahead and bred and and uh, and began to have uh, their their offspring but that's not the whole thing because of the lattice that was that was made there it was done in such a way that there was a signal that it would go through the nose smell to the brain and actually affect the dna so that the the uh, sheep and the goats, instead of having a mixture of the pure white and the, the spotted, they just begin to have the spotted and the ring scraped type of, of offspring. So that meant that the the offspring that was going to be given to Jacob was going to increase and increase and increase over Laban's because they were being affected by this genetic uh, lattice effect, which we call latillusion. So, so, uh, <clears throat> uh, and, and I, if I say Joseph, I'm not meaning Joseph, I'm meaning Jacob. Uh, just in my fast rattling on here, uh, I'm talking about, uh, uh, Isaac and his son Jacob. So, uh, uh, don't want to get that mixed up because that's, that's where we're at. Uh, Isaac and Jacob. And, uh, so here we go. Now, we've got something that's happened here. Well, let's, let's look into this thing about, about, uh, a smell. Did you know that um, they say that that they have experimented scientifically in these big retail outlets with a special kind of scents uh, to to blow in their in their uh, uh, air conditioning and and heating units, so that there are uh, a scents, uh, various smells, kinds of smells uh, that that come into the stores. And they create a subliminal desire to shop and to make purchases. I know, I'm sure you've heard of that before. But, and that someone says, well, that's crazy. Uh, no, I don't think it is crazy. I think <clears throat> that people are affected by smell. You smell food cooking. You weren't even hungry till you smelled it. And all of a sudden, you, you are hungry. And you're hungry for what you smell cooking. You smell a steak. Oh, man. I just want a steak. I, let, hey, why don't we, why don't we just have a steak for dinner? Or why don't we go to the restaurant there and have that steak? Oh, that smells so good. It has, it affects your brain. It affects your thinking. It affects your desire. And so it had to, it changed you from what you might have been going to go eat to, to, to what you smelled. And that's what you decided you wanted that to eat. Now, all these senses that we have, they, they, they have something to do with, you know, with, with how the, the body is affected. You know, there, there is, um, you know, uh, uh, odor recognition. And uh, there is so much that uh, we could have talked, we could talk about that. But, you know, we, we, we have to realize that the effects of the poplar hazel and chestnut opened up that the way they were in those streaks that they were emitting a smell and that smell was a lattice changing thing on those animals causing them to give birth to spotted uh uh you know offspring and and that was increasing the wealth of of jacob wow how utterly incredible fantastic and a true absolutely biblical revelation of a of a ladder lattice that had and contained within it a revelation that was able to change the DNA and the genome. Wow. 
Well, you say, I, I just don't know what to, to think about that. Well, there's a whole lot more to it than you can possibly even imagine. For instance, if I was to tell you that um, some of the uh, UFO things, uh, there are some UFO experiences uh, that they have had in which there are people who have smelled uh, odors uh, from the effect of there being a UFO close by. They can smell metallic smells. Some call it, uh, you know, more like, a, a, some some say it's almost like a sulfur smell. Uh, they have all kinds of different uh, people. Uh, they, they did a study and uh, on 26 people that had smelled uh, the the uh, UFOs, they had supposedly gotten close to them. Uh, whether that's 100% true or not true, uh, uh, I think there is a certain amount of truth to it. For instance, they discovered that ball, B-A-L-L, -L, lightning has a smell. And that it's very similar to the kind of smell that that people who have smelled UFOs uh, 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 say that they have smelled. And, and so there's something that, uh, like, um, they call it uh, electrified oxygen. And this electrified oxygen... Uh, that, uh, you know, is accelerated oxygen uh, is affected in such a way that uh, it can even give off these smells as there is this terrific, terrific speed of an object, like whether it be lightning, ball lightning or a UFO moving through the atmospheres and and that it, it that it, it has a tail, uh, a telling tail uh, to it. Uh, and it has to do with with the odors caused by the effect. So, uh, you know, that's not just a simple Simon meaning nothing. That has some very fantastic, uh, interesting uh, aspects to it. And I think that this, this whole revelation, um, you know, is, is absolutely important. Okay, I want to stop right now, and <clears throat> I want to get into this... Um, um, Latitation. Now, if you were to look up the word latitation, uh, you would have a hard time really finding uh, the meaning of it because um, it is um, a word that uh, is um, obsolete. And uh, it's an old word and it's very obsolete. And the me meaning you would probably find that it says is an invoking for hidden knowledge, um, well, no, that is not what it will say. It will say, uh, it will say that it it has to do with things that are hidden, and uh, things that have been uh, lost. Uh, but if you go to the really ancient ancient dictionaries, when that word was uh, not obsolete, when it was popular, uh, what it will say is lati latitation is the invoking for hidden knowledge and abilities to come forth. So I wanted to do a prayer today, as I promised last week, for you people that are listening today. And I want to evoke uh, the spirit of, of, uh, of, of good knowledge uh, from tree of life type of knowledge from God uh, to open up within you uh, to bring forth within you the kingdom of God mystery of Latolution and Soundtron and uh, and Lattice Revelation. Um, so if you would just concentrate with me. Uh, when I was praying about this here the other day, I had an almost like an epiphany. And it seems like that I was, um, I was praying uh, over, um, you know, some people. And... Uh, as I was praying over these people, uh, there was like an electric cleansing that began to take place in their body. And, and you could just see these ripples coming down their body as, as the excess uh, uh, electricity uh, was being removed and, and everything was being firmed into you know, a better and proper lattice. And uh, uh, it, it was like um, an emtristic or electric cleansing uh, it was beautiful, and the cleansing resulted in, uh, you know, through uh, these pulsations of of aura glowings that begin to come over the bodies. 
And as these aura glowings uh, begin to uh, come over the body, uh, it, 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 it had an effect uh, on, on them. And, and that effect, uh, we believe, uh, especially as the aura starts from the crown of the head, goes down, uh, is an effect uh, that will uh, grow in you and grow on you. Uh, just like, you know, a Holy Ghost experience, uh, causing you to be keener of your memory, causing you to be keener, uh, of, of your insight, uh, to be able to interpret, uh, to be able to hear something and understand it, uh, to be able to see something and better understand it, to hear this word of God and, and have it become, uh, not only the Word of God as it is just in the spiritual air of its revelation, but spiritual uh, in the sense of the Word being made flesh, so that that it becomes a part of the revelation in you physically. Uh, it, so the Scripture says, you know, except a person believe that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, that he is Antichrist. Um, there is an Antichrist aspect uh, there's always been many Antichrist aspects, and that Antichrist aspect is those parts that are negative, those parts that, that cannot break through, that cannot believe, be, because they are in the bondage uh, of their lattice. And God wants to loosen you in that lattice and set you free. He wants to loosen your lattice, set you free, uh, open apertures of those spaces that have infinitive electrical forces between them that have uh, a force that's capable of infinitude and, and begin to uh, move with momentum and move uh, with spirit uh, in this uh, latitation uh, so that, so that uh, you are moved uh, uh, and there is an invoking of hidden knowledge and abilities to come forth. So just begin to concentrate on this. Just say in your heart, you know, I, I, I want to be able to understand this manifest uh, word. I want to be able to understand uh, the Bible in the 30, 60, 100 fold. I want to, to be able to have the anointing of God that will allow me to, to uh, come into this knowledge and for it to not be so difficult and so so complex, but but that even though it may appear in a difficult and complex form, that it will be easy for me to assimilate it. Are you ready? Are you ready? Because I want to pray for you right now. I feel the Spirit is already here. Spirit is already moving out there with a lot of you people. I can, oh, oh, is there ever power here right now? Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Lord. Thy kingdom come right now, this very moment, as this prayer is going forth all over the, the radio waves. And people are receiving this word into their ears. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. That is where the Spirit of God is moving right now. And these people begin to send, O oh God, uh, your latitude, Lord, to these people. This latitation uh, and, and this Word of God begin to move, Lord, over their entire bodies. Uh, begin to endow every cell in their body, uh, the genome in their body, their their lattice, their DNA. Uh, begin to move in their, their brain, uh, all the, uh, the different parts of the the brain uh, through the corpus callosum uh, to move lord to all the hemispheres uh, to move through the batons uh, the synapses begin to uh, effect and open begin to open up the treasures that are connected uh, to to the kingdom of god within and cause their hearing and their seeing just cause this glow to come over their bodies right now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, this glow of your amtristic spirit to begin to cleanse. Oh, there must be a lot happening. I can sure feel the power of God right now. It's beautiful. It's powerful. And and, and I just feel it. And so I just pray, God, uh, that this will happen now and that they'll be able to maintain this and keep it. Just bless them, Lord. Bless them now with this and cause it to have continuity and continuance. In the name of Jesus, amen. Wow, praise God. Let me get a drink of water. And so, in this revelation, there is so much. You know, in evolution, they came up with, with some things that they, they checked. Uh, some things that are just, in my book, 
they just seem almost crazy. Uh, but you know, uh, we're going to we're going to look at those, and we're going to get into them. Uh, oh my! I, I guess I'm a long ways from thinking that I was done. I haven't even got back into the the book of the Seven Thunders yet, and I'm just really getting started here. Uh, I got a few things I just have to cover. I can't just quit here. I've got to cover some of these very very important uh, revelations that I haven't gotten into yet. Um, they're just uh, absolutely uh, you know, phenomenal things to understand and to take into our hearts and minds and and uh, to just open the 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 body field uh, uh, of our lattice and and allow these uh, these things to uh, to to really uh, you really uh, get to, to this understanding. So praise be the name of God. This praise be the name of God. Uh, we thank God and we praise Him because uh, we know there's. We know there's a breakthrough. We feel the breakthrough. We feel the breakthrough has has happened. Uh, <clears throat> evolution. <laughs> Here, here's evolution for you. Here's one of the latest things that they feel that they have discovered. And uh, what what that latest thing is, uh, you know, is um, that uh, that probably a, several billion years ago, a couple billion years ago. Uh, that there was an effect uh, that happened. And uh, this effect that happened, uh, which was a nucleation of, of, the, of the atoms, um, caused for there to be a one time, and we'll get more into this in the technicality of it next week, a one time change. And this one time change allowed there to, to open up uh, these one cell type of creatures uh, uh, and and the various kinds of bacteria and so forth to open it up to where they had the potential for these one cell creatures to to be opened up to as much as two hundred thousand different changes uh, and development uh, of their DNA and that happened one time it has never happened again as far as they know it will never happen again and that is what has allowed all of the changes and the progression of evolution to happen. Well, that is a sickening thug uh, in my mind and ears when I hear it, because that is just absolutely not the way it happened at all. Uh, and it's just another way to try to, uh, to steal away uh, the power of, of the knowledge of good. Uh, there is uh, something really neat I will read out of the, the book of, of the Seven Thunders. Uh, it was one. It was the second, the second uh, thunder, the second universe, and there was this lady by who was a very powerful speaker by the name of uh, Tanzia. And in the 166th uh, page of the Manifest Chronicles, uh, she was a noble, and as she walked toward the podium, uh, <clears throat> she elected not to use the track viewer screen at her seat, um, but she began to speak. And as she began to speak, these tangerine colored rays. Uh, began to infaunting her words uh, with vibrations and began emanating off her lips. And here's what she said. In the everywhere of an existence, in the everywhere of an existence, and in every particle of that existence, there are tones imbued from which the existence arose, which tones are messages that may come in many forms, including light. So then in our present world, there still remain, visibly and invisibly, such tones of knowledge. Sometimes such sounds are called noise by those who cannot hear or discern their message. Nevertheless, those tones abide ever available to creators to strum into endless figures and fashionings of creation. So there be intonations manifestly wonderful, expressing broadly, exceedingly, and clearly with penetrating warmness and uh, omniscience of the Supreme One. It has been said, enter the vibrations. And that's what we're asking you to do tonight. Enter into these vibrations. Enter into this deathlessness. Enter into this lattice, a ladder. Uh, the Lord is standing at the top in the heaven realm, in the Father's house realm. 
Therefore let us listen, she goes on to say, for those signals which are bestowing the abounding features of the tones of existence. We have learned all things, either have sounds or intonation, or are stepping points that bridge the flow of harmony from one conveyance of knowledge to another. In sonacy, we may enter the ranges of endless boundings, where we can reach to the ornaments of trebles, and we can and to the deep tone governments in depth of sonacy. So then, the underlining features of the orders of life are revealed in the beauty of song. For in that song, the rises and ebbs, the ebbs and rises, the flows of circuits, the unfolds, the transports, give charm and enthralls to the ethereal and terrene fashions of life. Ah, so it be. Let us not forget that when mystical darkness dominates, then comes the sound of the Supreme the Supreme One, to overpower the darkness that umbras the color of sonic verse. Suddenly, a power to rise is given to the color of sonics, so that by its hues of song, spreading penetratively, the phantom, the phantom of darkness are flung away. I predict such a coming flight of song, marvelous of rhythm, tirelessly and tranquilly, tra tranquilly chart charting new passages with every sweep of its rhythm. Wow. Wow. Absolutely awesome. Oh, I wanted to get into so many other things. But you know what? Uh, we're running out. I, I will throw this one other biblical thing in as we're talking about sound because it so beautifully goes with sound. Um, in the days of the prophets uh, that that we're into the sound revelation. Uh, the 25th chapter, first verse of First Chronicles. First Chronicles 25, verse 1. It says, Moreover, David and the captains of the host separated to the service of the sons of Asap and of Heman and of Jejuthun, who should prophesy with harps and psalteries and with cymbals, and the number of the workmen according to be their service. There was an understanding there in the in the days of uh, of the word of God. Uh, there there was an understanding that um, that sound had a conveyance power, and uh, you know when we begin to get into the lattice and latolution, we begin to get into the latolution how the uh, sound can affect things, how that optical vision can affect uh, you know affect things. Uh, how that smelling can affect things, uh, how that touch and feel can affect things. Uh, it is it is just absolutely awesome the the potential of of all these things. There there just seems to be uh, no end to the revelation, and every one of them are just so beautiful. Um, I want to read this part in the Bible because it it is such a beautiful real thing um, they looked for a person for Saul because when the spirit of of the Lord left Saul uh, <clears throat> and this anointing spirit left Saul uh, an evil spirit s took over and he he was terribly depressed and ter terribly bothered when this evil spirit would come on him and he knew that there was a possibility because he had received enough revelation that if he could find a person who could play a harp with spirit, that that could give him some relief from this tormenting uh, possession that tr that w was trying to obs you know obsessive depression uh, that was trying to come on him. So uh, um, they finally you know uh, said, "There's a fellow by the name of, of David. He's he's a really brave person. He's uh, he, he's a soldier." But he, he's incredibly talented at playing the harp. So they brought David to him. And in the book of Samuel, Samuel, uh, Samuel chapter 16, we'll start with verse uh, 14. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit from the Lord troubleth thee. And, uh, and uh, let the Lord now command thy servants which are before thee to seek out a man who is cunning player on a harp. And it shall come to pass that when the evil spirit 
from God is upon thee, he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. And Saul said, Provide me such a man. Verse 21. And David came to Saul and stood before him. And he loved him greatly, and he came as his armor bearer. Verse 23. And it came to pass uh, when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul that David took a harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, People have not really gotten to the understanding of Latolution. They have not gotten to the understanding of the lattice. How powerful these things can be. How that that they can even affect the spirit world. How that a man's playing on a harp, an anointed man playing on the harp, could cause horm- harmonic, harmonic messages to rise. And for that to go through the hearing and into the brain, and the brain to begin to send impulses out throughout the body uh, to where the person was re- so refreshed that the the demon evil spirit could not tolerate uh, the presence of that refreshing and had to flee and leave uh, from that uh, from that uh, uh, obsessional uh, position. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there is so much that is beautiful. There is so much that is wonderful about Lanolution. Because when we begin to get into Lanolution, we begin to get into the understanding of how these things can be used in our life to help us to be well. You see where they called this a sickness because it this evil spirit was haunting him in a kind of, of mental depression. And, and so it was like a mental sickness. And But, you know, when he would hear the music, when Saul would hear the music, he would get well. It would heal him. God is wanting to heal his people. He's wanting to heal their nervous conditions. He's wanting to heal uh, their their uh, torments and, and to make them whole. And latolution is available. And the lattice revelation is available. And there's so much more that I want to teach on that because we're not even into the most incredible parts of it. But we're going to finish that next week because I have to leave, you know, time for for us doing the Gentile session. And um, uh, I think what I've been trying to do lately is uh, leave enough consideration for people and not press them too long with my teaching because, uh, you know, there's just so much that people can uh, handle in one conveyance. Uh, and, and uh, of course, we do have, fortunately, the, the uh, capability uh, to play again these messages over and over and over. But now <clears throat> we want to get into um, tonight's uh, Jin Tao. And, uh, uh, you know, we are getting lots of results. I'm getting, uh, you know, uh, phone calls and emails and all kinds of uh, very encouraging uh, results uh, from people that we've been uh, working on through these uh, uh, services. Tonight, uh, I want to deal with the um, <clears throat> the thyroid. And um, uh, we, we want to do um, uh, this session for people uh, with have a thyroid imbalance. <clears throat> hypothalamus to the pituitary, pituitary hypothalamus to thyroid begin to send uh, your messenger hormones uh, to the regulators of the organic metabolism uh, for the thyroid system, uh, begin to uh, deal with um, uh, with the, the hormone that has to do with lowering blood levels of calcium by accelerating the calcium absor- absorbed by the bone when that is necessary and when that uh, is an advantage to... Um, um, releasing the uh, excesses uh, or in need it to provide uh, the proper balance uh, to the hormone level of uh, of the hormones in the thyroid. Uh, begin to begin to uh, uh, delve into this uh, by accentuating uh, through the hypothalamus uh, a response. Uh, for all of the different kinds of thyroid problems there are. Where if it's low, low thyroid home, uh, hormone levels, um, uh, to begin to deal with that. Uh, if it is high thyroid hormone levels, to begin to deal with that. Uh, to begin to um, uh, select 
uh, which disorders uh, need which particular type of hormonal treatment. Uh, begin uh, by using um, <clears throat> uh, the the kind of methods uh, that can uh, essentially uh, heal both conditions uh, by a special uh, hormone distribution of uh, iodine into the thyroid uh, gland system. Uh, hypothalamus pituitary, pituitary hypothalamus to thyroid uh, begin to uh, deal through the blood capillaries uh, and uh, all of the uh, various hormone messengers uh, that deal through the uh, principal uh, cells and, uh, and the uh, blood vessels uh, begin to uh, release these hormonal instructions uh, according to the case, the type of thyroid problem that the person's hearing have and use where uh, it will totally eradicate the problem and balance the hormonal levels, whatever amount of this uh, uh, body-created iodine uh, that is needed. If there's any inhibitors, if there's any blockers, if there's any messages that are I indifferent to this, they are now canceled. May God bless you. We love you. May you just take this message and go forward with it. Next week will be part three. We hope, we'll hope to get into some incredible things. God bless you. Until then. Hey, and don't forget to get onto the blogs. Amen.